everyone. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. I'm Richard Carlton, creator of FMTrain.tv, where every day is a great day for FileMaker training. We broadcast every day at 1 o'clock this time. So it's 1 o'clock for us, but for you, it's probably some other time zone. For some of you, it's early in the morning. For some of you, it's like midnight. But you value the FileMaker, you know, the platform itself. The platform is really quite excellent. People always say, why do you train so much? And it's because well, two things. One, I learn things from you. Everyone thinks I'm here to teach, but mostly I'm just trying to learn it from everyone else. And in the process of me learning, uh, everyone else learns too. It's really exciting. So uh, the platform is amazing. I know it's been around for a billion years. I, 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 people say, well, you should change the name to Blue Blue Fire Fireflies or something, some non trademark name, but everyone knows what FileMaker is, and I think part of our job going forward is to educate people on the new and great things that it does. So we're excited to talk about that. So today is going to be kind of a weird opening Q and A day. Uh, we had some other questions that people posted to us. Sometimes the questions that people ask um, result in us scheduling whole live streams about them because it's a bigger conversation. So I'll outline that a little bit. Before we say this, this show is live. It's free. We do have to pay the bills. Margaret, we have to pay Margaret. Margaret does have all our time for free. And so as a result, if you want to support the channel and you're not currently a subscriber, purchase one of our training bundles here. It helps us keep the lights on. We greatly appreciate it. Pivoting forward, Margaret, to our questions that we have for people. So send an email to multiple recipients. Okay, real quick. So Margaret, if you want to bring up a sample file that we have, like the gets one real quick, pop open the script workspace and let's talk oh. about this briefly real quick. Yes. That's right. That one right there, pop open the script workspace. All right, so go to script workspace. Let's take a look at the script workspace or the script command called send email. So here's the deal with send email. If you just type or send mail, send mail. It's not an email, it's send mail. Here's the deal with this command, very important. So normally people send out an email, they send one email out, okay? The, 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 the two, there's really, the person asked a question online and they said, hey, I've got a group of people that I want to send an email to. And how do I get them to get the email? And how do I, but if I, so if like I have 20 possible people, but I want to check off or click off like eight of the 20 people that only they get the email, how do I do that? Okay, let's stop with the first thing. First is that getting this command to work in general is the giant pain in the ass, okay? We've talked about that great length. Margaret has a link that she can bring up here on the notes page as she just clicks over there. Don't dismiss that, just jump over to the other app. Uh, wherever your page is. And this has to do with sending emails outbound out of FileMaker. And we're the latest one we've been playing with is Send Grid. And so once again, we're not going to watch the video right now. We're going to give you this link for everyone. Margaret's going to grab that link and give it to you. The short version is that sending emails out of FileMaker in general requires you to authenticate with the with the email sender that you are an authorized person. It's a very elaborate, very complex topic unfortunately it continues to suck because bad people do shit with email all the time if it was only good people using email but it's literally like having an alcoholic and having a bar right next to where your car's parked right you go into the bar you get drunk you drive your car bad shit happens it the two things almost go together all the time right it just they, they just do and so email people doing bad things with email results in uh, like a car that you have to blow test to make sure you're not drunken before it'll go anywhere with you. That's kind of the way the email works. You have to get into the email command and, they, and it has to authenticate with the service provider to make sure that you're not drunk and you're uh, able to send that email legitimately, okay? And so that's what this is frankly about. That's the big issue of making the mail work at all. Once the mail is working and functioning, then what ends up happening is this mail command normally is that I fi if I had to send it to eight people, I would send the email eight times to eight people. I would just have it loop and send to eight, find that group of eight people in the found set, loop through them, send, send it to them. However, there's a check, a radio button right there, Margaret, the first radio button right there. Up, up, up. That's a checkbox. That's a radio button. There you go. Hit that one. Radio uh, button. You can only select one. Got it. And then checkbox, right. you can select a multiple. Check multiples, right? Generally, that's a general rule. So multiple right here, it says it sends multiple emails, one for each record in the found set. So it's it's going to send, basically what it does is it sends one email out, but attaches to everyone. That makes sense? It generally is what that's supposed to do. Email client, uh, go to, go down to the uh, SMTP option up there at the top. Right? The pop-down menu, hit that one right there. Go down to SMTP server, click that. 
Yeah. So the short version of what ends up happening with this, it's a little bit leading. I don't think they've changed the beat. Go and close that. The, the behavior of this, when you hit multiple, it's going to send out one email, but it's going to attach everyone in the found set to that email. Okay. And so you want to test this, obviously, and verify it. So if you're a person building an email system, you need to load some test email accounts in there. Preferably, they're all variations of your own email. So you have like five or six or eight accounts or something. And you can test against those before you turn it loose with your customers or your boss or someone that might not take bug testing really well, right? But understand that you need to manage the found set on that, however you want to manage the found set. That and it, So it's going to send an email out. But it sends one mail out and it, and it pins everyone to that email. Historically, is how this has worked, okay? Understand that? So here's the rub with this. So if you click it, so once again, the first thing was getting it to work at all. Go ahead and click on that pop-up right there. The top one is where it sends out to the email client on your computer. The second one down is SMTP server. That one's a pain in the ass. But that's the one we use with SendGrid. The OAuth one down below is still a giant pain in the ass. For that to work, you have to either be using uh, a paid corporate account with Google or something similar with Microsoft. So the OAuth 2 is not OAuth 2 to anyone. It's OAuth 2 really to uh, a paid corporate customers for Google, which RCC is, but other RCC accounts like my flying stuff is not really that way. It's not a big paid corporate account. So I couldn't use this for like my aviation stuff. Um, so you have to make sure that someone has a paid corporate account with Google or a paid essentially corporate account with Microsoft is what that's going to require on that one. So that's a newer feature. Once again, I consider those that those limitations pretty substantial. So I end up using that second item, the second item in the middle of the SMTP server item. Then I use SendGrid as what we've been using lately. In fact, Jacob Taylor started using SendGrid internally for RCC because of some other problems we had. And SendGrid is part of Twilio, I believe. It's a Twilio service. So it's kind of a big company. Uh, well, big is relative, Twilio. But they Twilio just wouldn't go out of business tomorrow. I have a high degree of confidence in that this one day being out of business. Okay? Question, right? So that was that question. Do we have anyone along the way? Questions along the way? If someone throws out a question, we can take it. Then there is a mail to URL, which can launch your email slash webmail app. On your local client, as long as you don't mind your computer flashing and doing things on your local client. Yeah, it's not very professional. I don't use the local send local mail client because historically that provides not a great interface, uh, not a great user experience. The screen's flashing. And while we get used to FileMaker flashing and doing flashy thingies, while well, it's, you know, it's like the the, the men in black, you know, the flashy thingy, right? Don't stare right in this thing and, right? Um, FileMaker does that on its own, does the flashy thingy. Um, we kind of know why, because we wrote it. Like we wrote, we, us in the, here in this conversation, wrote the script, right? And so if it's flashing between layouts, we know why, because we told it to go to those layouts, right? And sometimes we try to hide it off screen or freeze the window, do things like that to, to limit the flashiness. But with the send mail command, the operating system is going to do the flashy thingy and you're going to be, and it'll depend on the operating system and the, and the email clients involved about how much of a flash it's going to be. So just keep that in mind. There is also an insert from URL step for accessing emails via API. Yeah, I'm not discussing that. That's not what the question. The question was how the person could make the send mail command work, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a there's 500. Listen, we could also try to connect it to the Claire's Connect, assuming that that works. I mean, there's 5,000 ways of sending an email. All of them, all of them are a pain in the ass and require authentication, right? Because of bad actors, right? So it's not so much that there's different ways of sending the commands. It's a getting the Listen, we're in a professional solution. You're going to send the mail. You're going to send the mail out of FileMaker. It's going to go to a service. They're going to send it out for you. When we, when we, like for example, the person was sending this email. I have this thing, and I want to select eight or twelve people or twenty people, and then I want to send this email to that group. That person is not going to want to build the solution for their boss. Then the boss hits send, selects the people, and then the screen starts flashing. 20 times, flash go, flash go, flash go. And on Mac, sometimes you have to actually tell it, are you sure you want to send this? Yes, click the send, right? Right. All sorts of weird security pops up. Microsoft does the same thing. With Microsoft, it pops up a dialogue and it waits so long and then it'll, I think, auto dismiss. So it does flashy. Those dialogues auto dismisses them. Um, that's Windows 11 Pro, Margaret. We played with that. That's fun. Sending it out to a local client creates a functional email that's really an unprofessional application. I wouldn't 
want to do it. I mean, I do it for myself. It was an ad hoc and I only used it once a year. But outside of that, I want it to be, I send it. It does a little green checkbox. It's happy. It just works. So, but yeah, this is an ongoing battle with email. It really is. And then just because you can send it to insert URL or Claire's Connect or something, you're still going to have to authenticate into a service and they're going to have to trust you. You have to do that, which is kind of the problem, right? It's a giant pain. And they keep changing it because then someone will figure out how to hack Google's token thing and then they'll up the security even more and then up the security even more. It just, it's a continuous thing. All right, Margaret, next question. Potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 